My artist name, so I have two or actually multiple artist names, but uh, I go by Lady K Fever. And then I also go by Kathleen Howie Garcia, which I always debate whether or not I should use that name. Um, when I was about 14 or 15, I knew that I wanted to be in the arts. I wasn't sure if I was going to be a dancer or an actor mm -hmm. or a painter, but that's kind of what's happened. What's the most interesting for me about art is um, that there's so many ways to look at it, there's so many different ideas, and everybody has their own kind of perception that's really fascinating to me. So, I mean, I do work with kids, so that's actually, kid art is really, our children's art is really inspiring because they don't think about it, yeah. they just do it. And so that for me as an artist, I, I'm relearning how to be a child again making my art. So. That's where I'm at today. I mean, art's just interesting for me. I wish I could like pinpoint it and say I'm interested because of this one thing, but it's overall in general, whether again, if it's dance, or if it's poetry, or painting, or I don't know, art could be someone just hanging out on the street for me, just the way that it's presented. I feel like I'm more respected um, as a female artist. That's a hard one for me because I always want to ask the question as an, a male artist. Most people don't say male artists. Yeah. They normally say artists. So I just feel like that automatically puts me into a position of being like a, a lower or less, not equal. Um, I feel like I have more respect now just because of that I've persevered and I've struggled and I'm still doing it. So, you know, I feel like I definitely have more respect, but I in the past, um, I felt that it kind of was a joke or like something that a notoriety, something funny. And it was really hard to go through that process of being a woman making art and then kind of feeling like a joke. So I feel that as female artists, we do get respect, but we have to start with self-respect and respecting what we do and taking it serious. And that it's not just a hobby. It's not just something I do once in a while. It's like my art is my life and my life is my art and I try not to separate the two. School, being in high school, looking at like Van Gogh has always been my favorite, so that inspired me, like the Starry Night. And then I think also because he had such a struggle, um, and, he, and he struggled so much personally, I could identify with that. And then it changes for me. It depends on, like again, I kind of am in this mode as an artist that I'm, my, I'm looking for inspiration or finding inspiration. So I definitely, like, there's a, in the graffiti world, like Mode 2, I can think of. He's a graffiti artist. Mm. Um, there's so many of them. So a lot of artists, for me, it's like I could go down a huge long list of all these artists, that there's certain things that they do that inspire me. But I take it and I try to, like, transcend it and make something different inspired by them. I came to New York. Um, I was just visiting with my daughter, my older daughter, Aisha. And someone had told me to go out to the Fun Factory, which is now Five Points in Queens. So I hadn't painted. I felt like I went from being on the streets, uh, totally doing illegal work, not doing anything legal, to having a child and then not painting. So I kind of what they, I went into retirement. That's like mm -hmm. the the word for that for two years. And I thought I was over the whole graffiti thing, but then when I went to the Fun Factory. I think it was 2001 uh, in May that inspired me and then I met some writers that day, some graffiti writers mm -hmm. and then we kept in contact and every time I came down here they would invite me to go paint. Just what happened with me and that's kind of why I have the name Fever is it, it just overwhelmed me and I became obsessed and I still have these moments of like it's this language, it's this tool that like, you know, I'm gonna put up my tag here and then someone's gonna come along and be like, hey, Lady K was here or hey, Fever was here. And so it really became about this language communication between me and other people who were involved with uh, trying to improve things for youth or just, we were just rebellious. We didn't fit into the box of society at that time. So it was really fun for me because I didn't think about taking photos, I didn't think about books, I didn't think about magazines, I didn't think about fame, I didn't think of any of that at all. For me, it was a way for me to release myself and in some ways I felt like, um, and I still feel this way about graffiti, it is a way that as human beings that we need to see that we exist. Okay. It's Canadian, so with my nationality, um, I don't even really, I mean I do identify as being Canadian, but I'm first generation Canadian, 
So my mother's from uh, England, and my dad's family is from Ireland. I mean, being the what person of other, most people will see me and they'll assume that I'm Greek, I'm Puerto Rican, Dominican, uh, which is funny because I don't think I look Dominican at all. <laughs> in Canada, I feel like in order to be classified as like a white person or a Caucasian person, you had there's a certain a it comes down to classism it comes down to money so you have to have a certain level of money the second thing is um, because i'm not blonde or blue-eyed or very light skin i mean i'm lighter than some people and but darker in canada so yeah. it was kind of like people were always like what is your nationality i feel like borders and countries separate us and then we have language that separates us but there's like we all are living this experience on this planet earth yeah and it really sucks to be separated just by language. things that we can't really have that full worldwide human experience together sure. albanian like i get i feel like i'm what i say racially accused because people are like well, why don't you talk why don't you talk italian you're you look italian <laughs> and i'm just like i'm not but there could be you know like we're all mixed but we have to all like agree to that, like co-sign on that, that we're yeah. mixed and let's figure out what we all are. <laughs> like with a child, you give a child a pencil and they're not gonna go to a piece of paper and write. They take that pencil and they go to the wall. And I find that really fascinating that our instinct, our first instinct is to paint on wall. <laughs> Both my daughters do that too. And I think I look at them being like, now I understand why, like I had put something up on a wall, how important it is to think about our audience and thinking about how inspiring we can be and also just language um, and using words as a tool to change things. We're gonna go look at my mural right now in the back of the Bronx Museum. Awesome! We're on our way right now. I'm going to look at some brilliant artwork. You're about to be inspired in a few seconds. Just informing you. So what the flower is, is as a teaching artist, um, when I go into classrooms, when I ask kids to just doodle or to draw, a lot of times what comes up is for girls they make this flower so it's this repeating flower image and so for me it's what I call the coming of age flower it's kind of like the graffiti S that a lot of New York City kids do it means that you're able to have skills and you have abilities and you're getting the whole idea of we share uh, came out of the idea of what we share as a community and then what we also share as people so and I kept the idea, like ideas, definitely family. These are all the closest memories. And then it goes to understand culture, change, wish, questions, hope, peace, and then to the bigger issues like respect. We respect, uh, we share viewpoints, we share space. These are all words that came up during the workshop that I worked on to design this wall. And so what I've been working on, this is an experiment. Um, I've started to include stuff like uh, kente cloth, which is African cloth from different areas, and kind of tying them in. Then we have Indian cloth, and just kind of meshing, using it as a metaphor for the meshing that happens within this community, and then also within communities in the Bronx and New York, from other communities that I've lived in, like Toronto, Vancouver, there's always this broad diversity and I want to use the word multiculturalism because it's more of a blending um, and I pick up on it. So what I did is I, I worked on, I worked with kids and then I came up with this design based on what we had talked about and then using that as a starting point as for inspiration because I know as a graffiti artist or as a street artist coming up I would see people's art on the street and I would be inspired to go out on the streets. And then on this side is where I had the kids. These are all sketches of buildings. Um, one child did a sketch that says, I love you, mom. Uh -huh. And I had kids actually fill in the windows and do the building. So I, I ha even though it wasn't the kids who actually did the sketches, I would give it to kids who were stopping by the wall and they would sketch out the other drawing by the other kid. So it became this whole big layered collaborative idea. And then we have the Bronx Museum, and then this big building, so just a little bit of historic uh, stuff. So just the idea of like what we share, and I think we should always ask that question, is like, what do we share, and we share this, and acknowledge that as opposed to what we don't share. And again, going back to like, we have mad boundaries, and 
uh, put up bar barriers and we categorize people and stereotype and it's ways for us to block ourselves.